The archery was a key skill in the Highland warrior culture and bows were used in the Highlands right up to the 1690s where previous to that every lad would have been trained how to shoot from the age of 10 years old. But what sort of bows did they have and what did they make them out of? Well I'm a beginner at making bows but join me in this video as I make this longbow using the materials that would have been available to our ancestors and as I go along making it I'll tell you a wee bit about what I found out about the history of the bow in the Scottish Highlands. Stay tuned. Now I'm not a very experienced boyer, so this video is probably going to be a wee bit more of an experimental video rather than a how-to video. But I'll be following some of the, the basic bow making instructions from this book, which is a really good book. So like most bows in Europe, the bows in the Highlands would have made predominantly out of yew, but they could have also been made out of ash or oak. Uh, this particular stave is maybe not, you know, is less than perfect but uh, I didn't want to have to cut down a whole yew tree because they're not very common in this part of Scotland uh, but I found this nice straight branch uh, but I've already split the stave, removed the bark and left it to season so it's nice and dry so uh, I've got the outline of the bow already drawn on and um, I'll get started shaping it now you could say a definition of a long bow is a bow that's about as high or taller as the archer is shooting it. Now the, the era of the Highlands that I'm interested in which is when the plaid was being worn. This is sort of 15th to 18th century and as I said bows were still being used around that period. In fact I think the last time they were used in battle in Scotland was in the Battle of Mulroy in 1688 but apparently they were still being used in Glencoe up to the 1690s. Now obviously it's hard to say that there was one design of bow being used all around Scotland but there seems to be the sort of the most common design that was used in the, the 1600s was actually a, a shorter more recurved bow um, but also long bows seem to be around so because I'm not all that experienced at making bows and uh, this maybe isn't the best stave uh, I'm gonna make more of a long bow because that's a bit more forgiving on the wood So I've just finished planing down uh, the outline of the bow to what I want it and you can now see the beautiful contrast between the lighter coloured sapwood and the darker coloured heartwood. So the sapwood is springy in nature so it's going to be on the back of the bow so when it gets drawn it's going to go this way so it's going to be getting stretched and the harder heartwood is going to be in the belly of the bow so it's going to come under compression as you draw it and it's the, the properties of these two types of wood that makes you such a good material to make bows out of. So I'm now gonna carefully take wood off the belly of the bow so that it tapers towards the ends. So I've been working more on the belly of the bow, getting it to taper so that it's about an inch and a quarter thick at the handle and it tapers down to half an inch at the tips and uh, it's starting to look a wee bit more like a bow. I've uh, smartened up the outside of it a wee bit and uh, so I think next I'm just gonna work a little bit more on the belly of the bow to get closer to the draw weight that I want and um, the draw weight of the bow is what corresponds to how powerful the bow will be at the end and again likely there would have been a lot of variation in in terms of how powerful the bows were in the Highlands but from my reading probably the average bow you would find would be about 50 to 60 pounds in draw weight uh, which is considerably weaker compared to you know the famous English long bows of the medieval period that you know could draw up to like 120 pounds in draw weight uh, but you know they were sort of designed for different circumstances the you know the English war bow was firing heavy arrows at armoured knights uh, whereas you know the the bow in the highlands during the 17th century was primarily used for hunting and for the sort of skirmish hit and run warfare of the highland clans you know in the 17th century uh, a typical warrior is wearing no or very little armour so a bow a sort of 50 or 60 pound draw weight was you know totally suffice for that sort of warfare 
and that sort of hunting. Now gonna put in some temporary string knocks. Now there's a, a real art form to tailoring a bow. It's something I, I don't have a lot of experience in. Um, but you can see I've been working down the belly of the bow and you can see this, uh, the upper limb has got a nice bend to it. I'm quite happy with that. But this lower limb has still got some stiff spots. So if I see a stiff area, then I just make a mark on my pencil. If I see like a, an area here, it seems to be bending quite a lot in just this section. So I'll make a little L, to say leave, and uh, basically just really take my time because I really don't want to break it. Now when I was looking at some of the old paintings and drawings of Highland Bows, some of them seem to have knocks on the end. Now if you look at English longbows, um, the knocks are usually made out of cow horn. Now I don't have any cow horn, but what I do have is a red deer antler that I found on the hill. So uh, we're going to try and make some knocks out of this. Never done it before, but see if it works. shot. Hopefully it won't explode in my face. Jeez, oh. So after some test shots with the synthetic string, it's shooting really really well. I'm happy with it. Uh, there's a small crack forming in the handle so that's why I've put a couple of lashes there. Now I just need to do a bit more sanding, maybe burnish the sapwood and then it's ready to put the finish on. Now when it comes to these small details I've kind of had to do a bit of guesswork and you know, look at what other cultures were doing to finish their bows but I would guess people would finish off wood like this with uh, some sort of animal fat and then beeswax. So the only animal fat I could find in my house was some pure goose fat and I've got a bit of beeswax to finish off the end and then after that I just need to make a string and probably put a handle on it and I'll be ready for battle so what could a Highlander make his bowstring out of again there's there's lots of materials to hand and um, you know one of the stories in school the moon mentioned the a bowstring being made out of leather cord which you know would work as well as some other native cords such as nettle but all through the the middle ages hemp was the the main thing to make bowstrings out of and hemp was being grown all around the UK sort of uh, 15 and 1600s so you know I would see why it wouldn't be available to people in the highlands so that's what I'm going to make my bowstring out of unfortunately you're not allowed to grow hemp in Britain anymore but uh, I bought some strong hemp cord online and I'm going to try and make a string using a Flemish twist. If you want to know how to make it, uh, I'm not the one to teach you, but I can put a link to uh, a YouTuber called Mike, who um, does a really good video how to do this. So finally, there's the finished longbow. There's a wee bit here that I might reinforce later, but other than that, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, it's probably ended up pulling between 65 and 70 pounds in draw weight. Um, you know, made from a single stave of yew, red deer antler knocks, treated with rendered animal fat and beeswax with a hemp string. So how historically accurate is it? Well, obviously it's not perfect. Um, things like you know, cow horn knocks would have been better. Maybe a shorter recurve bow was more common. 
maybe the longbows they had had more of a D-shaped profile rather than a flatter profile like this. Maybe they didn't have a, a fixed place for the handle. But you know, considering that this is only the second proper bow I've ever made, it's made out of the materials that most likely would have been available to them and you know it's within that power range that I was going for so I'm pretty happy with it. So if you want to find out more about the history of the bows in Scotland I'll put a link in the description below to a really good blog that I found and also another short YouTube video I found about the, the Scottish bow and if you're new to making bows like I am um, I'll put a link to Mike's channel uh, he's got some really really good beginner bow making videos. But enough talking, let's go play with it. So in the 17th century there would have been an overlap with the bow alongside some firearms such as the matchlock musket but um, it still seems to be that the, the bow was still prevalent perhaps because the matchlocks didn't hold up very well in the, the really wet Scottish weather and maybe because the bow was a, a big part of that Highland culture so it didn't disappear very quickly. It seems to be that only when flintlock muskets became better and more widely available that the bow started to disappear in the battleground. Thanks so much for joining me in this video. As I said, I'm a beginner to making bows, so I'm sure I made lots of mistakes, but I had a lot of fun making this, and you know, it turned out better than I expected. Um, thanks so much for watching everyone. Thanks for all the support I've been getting lately. Give us a like, leave a comment, share with your friends, and uh, be back with another video as soon as I can. Cheers folks, see you later.